Hello everyone. Today we're going to give you our perspective of caregiving uh, from the point of view of us caregivers. My name is Bahati Ernestine. I'm a nursing intern. And I'm Caroline Barongo, a nurse in one of the hospitals around. So uh, caregiving in uh, a whole, I can say it's not an easy task, but sure. once it's done from uh, not directing it into your self-interest, it really becomes something nice to yeah. enjoy. Yeah. So, how my journey into caregiving, I can say I really got to interact with my grandma when she was sick, and I really liked the bit, and it was in the hospital setup, I liked how the nurses were really going about it, and I was like, I think this is something I can really like oh, nice. into doing. So, one of my favorites and my what i enjoy doing a lot in caregiving it's helping the critically ill what yeah <laughs> that's like one of the hardest places to work as a nurse i can say why i like critical ill patients mm -hmm. it's because i love helping and this is someone who really needs your attention holistically for sure I'm standing there for the patient yeah and when i it comes with some satisfaction. Oh yeah. Yeah. But then, like, that's the place where you get the most losses. If you have like the critical patients who can, you know, go at any time. Mm -hmm. It's not easy, but having it in mind, this life is a cost. It's all about making sure that this guy or is uh, comfortable. Yeah. And trying to give the best that you can give during yeah, that true. moment. That's really nice. Yeah. Well, like on my side, I think I enjoy the emergency department most because <laughs> I think it's it's more real, something that you you can bump into day to day. Like let's say a child comes in, you know, they've swallowed a coin or, you know, someone has taken poison or, you know, someone has had an accident. Like that, those are things that you can encounter them in the home setup and the emergency area puts you in a place where you are actively involved so in case you run into those situations you can you know you can handle them really well yeah, it seems like you enjoy the adrenaline bit of it yes <laughs> <laughs> exactly i like the rush interesting yeah it's not bad we are different in different ways for sure so i can point out one of my lowest points mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. really comes with some challenges especially when you really want to help this patient or this client but they have some sort of doubts in you oh yeah so it really feels like oh god i really want to help out this guy and i really mean it it's from my heart mm. but you can see some sense um or some sort of doubt yeah it's that, like they don't trust you yeah it really oh, puts yeah. you off but again with the task that comes alongside it and it's in us to help yeah. you really have to just put that aside and, and go ahead and help yeah and try and build the confidence of the patients yeah. making sure that they know that you know what you're doing for sure mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah oh interesting yeah today we are going to talk about caregiving especially in terms of long-term care and caring for the terminally ill sometimes uh, naturally it has it ha its highs and its lows and uh, we're going to divide it into three perspectives the first one in the healthcare facilities the second one for the patients and the third one for the families yeah. mm -hmm. so on the health facility i think it it calls upon the caregivers back in the hospital setup to think which is, which is what happens we just we have to think beyond from way from admission mm -hmm. we have to have a structure on how we are gonna go home with this client of ours yeah. so we need to address uh, some issues that will be w that will start like addressing way from admission that yeah. we'll have to carry them all the Forward. way to the home environment so that calls for incorporation of the relatives mm -hmm. into the care of the patients immediate from admission 
all through to discharge so that it's easier for them to have it an easier time when transitioning to the care at home. It's not really an easy task, especially yeah. when you're not exposed to the to, care. Yeah. We get to experience this a lot, but as a family, it has, it's just something that just came abruptly, or it can be progressive, but you really need to put the relatives into, into the care, for sure. from away from admission through discharge, for them not to break down because it's tagged with its challenges yeah. as well when it comes to going to home environment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you see, like, uh, mm -hmm. usually when we are making the discharge plans, mm -hmm. how it should be is that we should start, as you said, yeah. from admission, mm -hmm. engaging the families, mm -hmm. you know, talking to them, making sure they know about the condition of mm -hmm. the patient, the possible outcomes, you know, and try and prepare their mind mm -hmm. to be in a position to handle this patient mm -hmm. upon discharge. Do you think that uh, our approach mm -hmm. gives these families enough, like do, does it impact their perspective, how they look at caregiving? Mm -hmm. Do you think that we as caregivers put mm -hmm. enough emphasis that they are as prepared as they should be, or there is a gap to be filled? Okay, there's, I can say we have a greater role to play, mm -hmm. and putting it into perspective, it's pegged on time. Yeah, yeah it's pegged well, on time. Yeah. It's all. You, it's a process to go through the same challenge that has come alongside this mm. long-term caregiving. Yeah. So it's all about time. Of course, there'll be this bit of uh, denial. Why is this coming Definitely. to yeah, coming to us? Definitely. So by the time they come to accept. It's tagged on time. It's mm. us to just pause a little bit yeah. and give them time, not being impatient towards letting them fr freely and mm. easily flow for them to adapt and stuff. Yeah. And then so there's also this point where mm -hmm. families mm -hmm. expect the patient to recover fully. Yeah. Then when the patient does not, then they get into denial. They're like, why aren't they getting better and we're expecting mm -hmm. them to get better? Like, that's what people yeah. go to hospitals mm -hmm. for. for yeah. um, I think with prompts, uh, maybe family conferences, mm. yeah. it will be easier for them, for them to really be taken through uh, how the prognosis of the condition Very of the important. patient, the challenges that can come alongside mm. it, yeah. how to go about it and I think through the conference and the, for them really to get to understand and of course through multiple sit downs and mm. counseling yes. it will really get to flow yeah. well but again it gets harder when the family doesn't accept mm. from the word go of it's a course. process yes or rather not even accepting staying positive about it mm. and having it in mind we are pulling through this yeah. irrespective of the challenges that will come mm. alongside the caregiving that we're going to have yeah. for the longer bit of this that's really true yeah that's really true mm -hmm. so when it really comes to the patient it's just another thing oh yeah for sure because it's holistic it's caregiving but we have to incorporate the patient yeah. at the same time to make it really easy. But do you think they also have a role to play in making it easier? Well, yeah, of course. Because I think sometimes we run into patients who are struggling themselves, mm -hmm. especially, you know, trying to wrap themselves around trying to accept their mm -hmm. situation and that maybe things are going to be the way they are for a long time mm -hmm. we find that themselves they're in denial mm -hmm. which means that their compliance will be low you no know, they'll refuse to change some things that they mm -hmm. should change mm -hmm. you know so they are fighting you the whole way you're trying to help them yeah then it calls upon us generally as caregivers to have it in mind like our clients will have their moments yes, that comes alongside the care, mm. making it easier 
all round for us family and the patient mm-hmm. that they'll have their moments remember this is someone who was previously well mm, and they exactly. yeah he, he, i all of a sudden i can't do my routines yes. so the frustrations can be there yes. and it's us to at least expect them it, making it easier from our side yes and even from the patient's side if they need space yes. we just let them have the space other than forcing them into trying to do what we think it's right while they're struggling exactly. with it exactly. psychologically yes. mm-hmm. and you know you've mentioned the the psyche part mm-hmm. uh, in terms of taking care of our patients mental health because mm-hmm. you know you see like yeah. we have the diagnosis altered yeah. self-image yeah, yeah like you were used to yourself in a certain way mm-hmm. and now things have changed yeah. and you have to adjust to all this you know mm-hmm. sometimes they fall into depression mm-hmm. you know sometimes it's hard for them yeah. and we should really really incorporate mental health mm-hmm. uh, education and what have you mm-hmm. for our patients sure yeah yeah it's it's a broader thing to talk about yeah for sure and there are so many things that come alongside the caregiving mm. all that we need at the end of the day is putting our minds all together it's holistic mm. if it calls for maybe getting a counselor go for this Do counselor it. if Do it, it calls for getting a spiritual leader get this spiritual leader on board actually yeah. it's it's supposed with that way you mm. have to make the environment holistic it's yeah. home environment yes there are days we'll have our trips to the to see the doctors and stuff you'll need this driver you need to explain to them that you have to incorporate all 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 other aspects mm. for it to really flow well avoiding so many frustrations yeah it comes with mental drain some can it's even physical draining yeah. draining you can go days it alters your routines especially now the family you yeah. have to somehow change your routines so that they can fit into this one and unfortunately you tend to forget yourself which is not good as a caregiver mm. so you have to look at the patient at the same time look at yourself mm. you need to have your time alone you need to just go refresh think about yourself what am i doing what have i not doing don't entirely forget yourself yeah. let it be t- p- part of you the, let the client be part of you but don't forget about yourself mm-hmm. as an individual for sure yeah that's a good point mm-hmm. i think as caregivers mm-hmm. we need to take care of ourselves because if we fall into depression mm-hmm. if we get sick will not be in a position to, to take help. care yeah, exactly yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. especially when it comes to making sure we are in a good mental yeah. space mm-hmm. that we are okay and strong mentally and psychologically mm-hmm. then that means we are in a better position to, to offer care, yeah. care and you know we are at risk of falling into this mental psychological challenges mm-hmm. if i may say so yeah. because you know sometimes it's draining yeah, yeah. sometimes it's tiresome mm-hmm. both physically and emotionally uh-huh. seeing someone suffer mm-hmm. and maybe it's someone you care about especially if you're a family caregiver mm-hmm. you know you need to see a counselor if you must you need to take some time off as yeah, she has sure said sure. you know mm-hmm. to just breathe in and feel the sun on your face just for you then you are renewed to take care of someone else yeah yeah okay, okay. yeah have we forgotten anything i don't i don't think so. yeah so i guess that's our take on mm-hmm. caregiving and um for family caregivers there's a course they can take oh, right oh yeah sure mhm so there's this course that is offered i think it's tagged with hospitals we call it uh, health care assistant mm. it's I think it takes around 6 months mm. subject to confirmation you can go ask about it so you'll be te- taken through on the sm- the basics yeah that you need to know when and what to do at what time mm. what to give yeah. yeah 
because you know there are some things we can teach you mm -hmm. in the facilities in our discharge plan before we release the patient into your care yeah. there's some basic things we will teach you mm -hmm. yes how to turn the patient you know how to give your patient a bath or something how to give the daily medication that are oral yeah the easy ones mm -hmm. but then for you to get more into it there's a course you can take which will be very helpful and will empower you yeah. to not feel that you know your whole life is around you know this healthcare work struggling to figure yes. out how do i go about it yeah. and there's somewhere you can go get trained and even before the discharge it's something that it's progressive yeah, yeah. yes so thank you guys and i hope you learned something <laughs> Bye. Okay, bye. <laughs>